so excited because today I'm actually going to be working on making some handmade valentines for some friends and I have some new products to try out so I thought I would just combine the two. I've been super excited to make some valentines and I have a really cool brand called Hippie Crafter who has sent me some fun new supplies to try so I thought I would try them out for you, kind of talk through what they are. They sent me a set of soft pastels, a set of watercolor pencils, which I'm really excited to try, and a few different sketchbooks and watercolor paper. So I'm gonna be using these things and kind of demo my Valentine's that I'm making, as well as kind of share with you my thoughts on how these different materials work and the quality of the brand. Okay, so I am really excited right now to try out some of these new materials that were gifted to me by Hippie Crafter. I've got two sketchbooks, two pads of heavyweight watercolor paper, some soft pastels, and watercolor pencils. And I'm gonna just kind of walk you through my process of making some Valentines and see how these new materials work. Okay, this is gonna be really great. I'm already blown away by all of my color choices and everything that I have to work with here. So I don't even know how I'm going to select color choices because look how many watercolor pencils there are. This set is phenomenal. Uh, I'm really, really excited to try them. So, um, these fun little tin cases that it comes in too is great. It seems like an awesome way to keep things organized, um, but I am gonna go ahead and pull them out just so I can have access to everything I wanna use. I'll be using these soft pastels after the watercolor pencils, so I'm gonna set them aside for now. Um, I guess to play before I make my Valentine's, I'm just gonna play a little bit in this sketchbook. This is some nice heavyweight paper. Um, it doesn't say it's for, it's mostly, see, dry media, but I am going to break those rules a little bit um, just to kind of see what happens with some of these watercolor pencils. So if you haven't used watercolor pencils before, one of the cool things about them is you can put them on paper and then activate them with the watercolor, or you can have wet paper and use the pencils on them and it kind of activates it. Um, they are water soluble, just like uh, many other paints like acrylic or um, typical watercolor, but they are still a pencil consistency. Okay, yeah, so I'm gonna try some of my favorite colors first. If you know me, you know I'm kind of drawn to more neutral tones. This is kind of a, a warm brown. Do a little bit of a gradient here. Kind of go a little darker shades, just kind of testing value a little bit. It's a nice little sepia color. Um, let's come in with this like dark burgundy. Check out this one too. I do like the, the feel of the paper. It is a little bit off-white, um, which is interesting for a sketchbook. I feel like most of the ones I've used are more of a bright white color, but um, I don't hate it. Mm, let's see, let me choose a pink because I love pink. And let's be real, I'm about to work on some Valentines, so I'm gonna be using some pretty pinks and reds. Coral color, oh yeah, I love that. What is this one? It's called Flesh Deep, it's the 018. Is the number of the color. Oof, I love this color. Okay, maybe let's get a dark blue in there. Indigo tends to be another one of my favorites. That says violet, blue, light, violet, blue. I honestly don't see a super dark blue in here. So that might be a color that's, that's missing. It's more of a navy indigo. 
might test some of these. I don't really love that one. It's a little too purpley. This one is the violet light blue. They're actually very similar colors. And this one is gray blue. So that, okay, that's gonna be more what I'm looking for. Kind of has that Payne's gray feel. Um, but I still would like to see something maybe a little darker than that. Um, no, I can always go in and mix some black into it use that same color and actually mix the black and the blue to to get that and that might be a little closer to the colors i'm used to working with all right now let's see what happens when i activate it with water i'm using my favorite princeton dagger striper brush um, i'm just gonna put a little tiny bit of water on there and just activate that wow that really turned yellow huh but I do like it a lot. Clean my brush, check out the pink. Oh, that's beautiful. It really activates very, very well. Um, and those pigments are nice. I love this color. It's like a perfect salmon. And I feel like I'm gonna be able to get that nice high flow water effect yeah, see, mixing the black in, that does really give me the color that I prefer to work with a little more often. Okay, so this is sketchbook. I'd say it's pretty nice. Um, the paper's a little thin, doesn't handle water well, but it says on the outside it's for dry media. Um, I guess I can tear that page out and test some of these pastels before Ooh, they're very very dry they almost have like a coating on them that makes it a little hard to use no, that one's not as bad Ooh, I like that color a lot so those don't actually have any names or numbers on them I do like this really sharp square edge now soft pastels can also be activated with water um, so I'm gonna try that in a minute oh, that's real red I do like that they have these little um, uh, sleeves on them okay okay Now that activates, but it also still kind of leaves some sketchy marks in there, which depending what you're doing could be fun. Okay. I feel like I'm in a good place to start on some Valentines with the watercolor paper. So let's experiment with that next. All right, so these, this watercolor paper comes in nine by 12 sheets, which is actually what I'm used to working with. Um, I usually use Canson watercolor paper in pads just like this, and I cut it down into four by sixes um, because that's how I prefer to work. But today, I'm gonna be creating some fun abstract hearts and then actually just cutting them out with an X-Acto. So I'm just gonna work on one big sheet. Um, let me go ahead and pick out some of my favorite colors here. I love this salmon pink, this cadmium orange, um, I'm gonna do some of these burgundy, chocolate, magenta. This is called orange. I do not believe that that's orange. Um, and then I think I will wanna bring that gray blue in. Some of my favorites. And then also a gray and a dark green. And I will go ahead and move the rest of these off to the side. So if you know me at all, my process typically goes with some abstract watercolor washes, mixing in some pastel, and then I love to come in with heavy body acrylic on a palette knife to give it some texture. So I'm gonna follow that same process. I did not get any um, acrylics from Hippie Crafter, 
but I have some fun new colors I wanted to try from some other brands. So I will bring those in as well. So let's come in here and just start with some abstract. Now remember, this is gonna end up being cut out as a heart in the end, um, but I'm just gonna start with some abstract washes and shapes. Mixing some of my favorite colors in there. And I'm kind of doing some sections with some different values. And they're not gonna be fully filled in either. I'm honestly literally just gonna activate these with water and let them kind of meld together. Um, and then I'm gonna come in with this gray blue and add some line work on the wet shapes. So this paper, I'm liking it. Um, it seems very durable. I'm gonna go ahead and mix my colors to create my fun washes in there. Um, but I'm gonna come back and do the gray last because I didn't really like how it kind of got lost in here. I do love that you can kind of pull some pigment from one color and mix it into another. This one's a little bit redder. I'm already can tell that I love this one. I maybe doing like some separate washes will create more of the work look that I'm going for. But while it's wet, I am gonna come in and just add some fun little bits of line work with this gray blue. And then we're gonna add in some chalk pastel. Uh, I think I'm gonna use this orangey pink salmon color. It's real nice. And it's fun because little bits of this are still wet as well. And as you can see, these are just like really abstract forms, but as this dries, I'm gonna be able to come in, cut out my hearts and create little um, Valentines. So I'm gonna do one more set. heavy-handed and not have quite as much I'm gonna use a little more negative space let's put it that way that was a little more brown than I wanted so I really want it to be more burgundy dark red some red in there and then this one's magenta but it's like a cranberry color okay again using that same brush i'm gonna activate like some spots and not others just so we have kind of some interest with like the dry the wet the interaction with water the knot I just, I really like to work with negative space 
and kind of lean into not overworking something. So we're just gonna do these kind of blocky, chunky washes on this one, as opposed to like on this one where I used a whole lot of water to brush over the whole thing. And I'm gonna use this. Some little guys there. I have this bright pink. This is way out of my comfort zone, but I don't, oh, wow, check that out. I don't hate it. All right, so we're gonna let these dry for a minute and then fix them with a spray fixative so the chalk pastel doesn't just smear all over the place. Um, and then my next step will be adding some acrylic with a palette knife. All right, so I used my heat tool to kind of speed up that drying process. You can tell it kind of warps your paper a little bit. So I like to go through and actually um, just kind of massage the paper and help it smooth back out a little bit. All right, so I actually have this new Liquitex Basics Acrylic Green Gray that I thought would be a really fun color to add some contrast into here. And I'm actually gonna just be using it directly onto my palette knife, just to add some swipes of color here and there. Um, I love painting this way with a palette knife because there's no cleanup. I don't have to put paint on a palette. All I do when I'm done with my palette knife is wipe it with a paper towel, throw it away, and it's all cleaned up. So I actually put paint directly onto my palette knife from the tube. And I come in to add my little swipes of color. Now remember, I'm gonna be cutting these out into hearts, and so I am kind of trying to keep in mind the shape that I'm gonna be cutting out and making sure my texture is gonna be included in those final pieces. dry. I'm going to spray them with a fixative. I use the Blick Matte Fixative, which comes in a spray bottle like this. I love how it kind of absorbs through the chalk pastel into the paper and really adheres it to the paper so that you don't get any more smearing or dust falling off. Um, then I will be coming in with an X-Acto knife and cutting out the hearts. All right, so instead of using an X-Acto knife to cut these out, I decided I'm just gonna come in with regular sharp scissors. Um, some of the bits of texture are really thick still, even though most of them are dry. I don't want them to uh, peel or get caught on the knife, so I feel like directly being able to cut through them with the scissors is gonna be a little bit better. So I really feel the flexibility here to have my hearts be kind of any shape I want because I'm going to be attaching them to cards. Sometimes it's easier to work on a smaller piece of paper, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut this to size. So here I have eight hearts and I'm actually going to go ahead and attach them to little white cards to put into envelopes. I bought at Hobby Lobby 
just some Paper Studio cards. They are textured cards with envelopes. And I went ahead and bought also these little double-sided foam sticky squares. So I'm gonna take my pre-made card. I'm gonna throw three little squares on here. Peel off the backs. And have a perfect place to just set my little card. So there's my little homemade Valentine. So I can write inside, package it all up, and send it to a friend. All right, all that mattered about the shape of these at the end of the day is that they were small enough to fit actually on my A2 size cards. So I did have to go in and cut a little bit of extra paper off of some of my hearts, but they all turned out beautifully. If you are interested in trying any of these Hippie Crafter um, materials, they're, they get a big thumbs up from me. I really love the color choices. I really love the simplicity of use. I love the packaging. Uh, highly recommend. There are links down below where you can go through and use my affiliate links to purchase these. And I hope you enjoy. Let me know how you enjoy them.